Welcome to the show, John and Chris. Great to be I here. I love all the positive messages you guys are putting out there mm -hmm. and how you have a tip every single day for how to change the energy in your life and how to f find joy. Thank you. It's Thank great you. To be great here. to be here. Yeah. Thanks. Well, talk a little bit about your losses. I know you both had some losses in your life, mm -hmm. and one of the things that's really interesting to me is that I know those losses had to do with parent loss, yes. mm -hmm. and that's really important because Heidi and I have found we have a, uh, over a half million people that are visiting our site at opentohope.com, and we were really surprised because we were looking at all of our data, mm -hmm. and we found that the second most visited thing or looked for, searched for, is loss mm -hmm. of a parent. Yeah. And you know, that's the internet. It's not little kids that are looking for mm -hmm. it. You know, they're just saying, I lost my mom or daddy. It's adults mm -hmm. saying, yes. I've lost a parent. What now? I didn't think it was going to hit me like that. Mm -hmm. And I think people are surprised when an adult parent goes. And, and well, even mm -hmm. older, where they've been taking care well, of Well, having a parent die is big, and I know you guys can talk about this too, but I remember when my father-in-law died and my husband said, you know, my whole life I've done things to make my dad proud. Mm -hmm. That's why I did them, and now he's not here. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, we just had a recent family situation where um, my son-in-law's dad died, and he's ha had, a, had a hard time mm -hmm. with it, and, and you know, I'm not really mm -hmm. sure, um, you know, what to do. He's watching a lot of TV and video right. games and stuff like that, and Heidi and I have found that men are more instrumental and like to do and that kind mm -hmm. of thing, so uh, he seems to respond when I say, uh, why don't we go do something, or why don't you come over for this, or he likes to invite us over and fix dinner, you know, that kind of thing. But I don't think he wants to sit around and talk about no. it even, and probably me even scares him worse that we're therapists, right? And that you're his mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I, I forgot I wrote a book called The In-Law Survival Manual many years ago. <laughs> so, so well, anyway. One, of the, one of the things that we suggest it's really important after the loss of a loved one is that the relationship does not end. Mm -hmm. Mm. In, in fact, it can even intensify and it can take on a, a very positive light and aspect. And that's what happened to me when my father, my father passed away. We had a very good relationship, but it's even stronger now. And in fact, my father is very instrumental today, not being physical, in my life and my daily activities. He's a, he's a guiding force. That's amazing. Well, and we feel that way right. about Scott, don't we? <laughs> Absolutely. He is a guiding light. And I really like what you're saying, John, because the biggest fear that people often have is that w they're going to forget over time, forget mm -hmm. their loved ones, forget the memories, forget what, what they meant to them in their life. But you're here to say that doesn't happen. Doesn't happen at all. Yeah. Right. Doesn't happen right. at all. Because they're in your heart and mm -hmm. they'll always be in your heart. And, you, so and yes, when you try to yeah. hold their stuff so close, yeah. it, it doesn't leave you space to open up no. heart to heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So Chris, how about you, your experiences? Well, my mom and dad, both of them passed away when they were very young. Especially mm -hmm. my mom, she passed away when she was 59, and at that time I never thought that I was going to get over the grief that I was going through with her, with her passing. Then my dad passed away five years after that. He had cancer, and it was just such a debilitating disease, mm -hmm. and it was just so draining on everyone that one day I just, I was down on my knees asking, how can I get through this? How can mm -hmm. I get through this? And, and I just had this knowing that I would be able to get through this. So if you're going through that now, you will get through it because we all eventually do get through it some, some way, somehow. Mm -hmm. And we'll be talking a little bit more about how to do that, how to get back in to your life again after the, the passing of a loved one. I, I like mm -hmm. what you're saying, Chris, that you will get through it because early on, mm -hmm. I know when my brother died, the pain was so great that exactly. I honestly thought I was going to die of a broken mm -hmm. heart and I right. didn't know how I was going to mm -hmm. get through it. So hearing people that are further down the road and mm -hmm. seeing them, is the lifeline that sometimes yes. we need. Right, and it shows us yes. that we're stronger than what we really know we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what if uh, not, not everybody gets along with their parents? Right. And, uh, you know, what if my dad beat me up, or mm -hmm. what if my mother screamed at me, or mm -hmm. and my parents were divorced, I had, you know, this separation. And, mm -hmm. and now, I, I actually had a nephew who got in touch with me recently and said, uh, my dad's, my brother's dad just died, and, and I'm wondering if I should get closer to my dad because he's having a lot of trouble mm -hmm. dealing with it. Will I have less trouble if I get in touch with him now? Mm -hmm. so, so I don't know. What about these ambivalent relationships? Yeah. Uh, and that can change and it can yes. improve some of them. Well, what I like to say about that is within every life situation, no matter how tragic or how painful it appears to be, and there's a lot of pain that we all experience as human beings, mm -hmm. within it is a, a, is a cloud. It's a dark cloud, and there's a, there is that silver lining in it. You know, one of the things that Chris and I do with clients is we suggest that within that cloud, there's an opportunity for you. 
Mm. It's truly like an opportunity for all of us. We're all on a journey. Mm -hmm. We're all here to experience life with its pitfalls and its ups and its downs and all of that. So it's, re it's really an opportunity. And we, Chris and I always look at what is the feedback? What is the opportunity for you in this situation? Mm -hmm. Even if it's a strained relationship. Why don't you read us uh, one of your tips? <laughs> Let's just open it up because I know that's sure, going to help. Sure, okay people think they're going to be able to go to this book and find something to do for the day. Okay, <laughs> well here we are. Give yourself permission today to create positive changes for your life. Okay, so giving yourself permission. Mm -hmm. yeah. First, yeah. read us Which another one. Should we just read the bottom part of I'll it? I'll read the so. bottom part. Make yeah. the choice today to give yourself permission to be successful, to thrive, and to flourish. All right. Mm, I like that. So mm -hmm. you can look at that for the day. Chris, mm -hmm. give us another one. Okay. Let's just randomly pick I love one. this. How many are there? 365 and one for each day. And you can just open them up and here we are. The mistakes you make today do not define who you are. No, Remember like today that you make mistakes. M mistakes do not make you. All right. I like, I like that. that. Yeah. Very good. And that gets us into forgiveness, right? Exactly. Yes. And that's how you can change a relationship with someone who has passed on. They mm -hmm. may not be here in physical form, but through the power of forgiveness, you can shift the energy that you may be holding around that person. And in the case, I had a lot to forgive with my father when he passed on, and he was no longer here, but for me to do that, what I did was I wrote a letter. Mm -hmm. I wrote a forgiveness letter to him, and then I went to the cemetery and I burned it there to kind of just release some of that negative. All right, that that's great. There. Heidi, well, let's see if we can take a couple of okay. questions from our audience. Hi, I'm Liz, and um, this question is for either one of you. Um, you say stay focused on the living and being of service in some way, but what if you don't have someone close in your life to focus on? Mm -hmm. well, well, one thing I would like to say is you always have yourself. Mm. No matter who leaves you in your life, there's always you. So it's so very important to strengthen yourself and always be there for you. Learn how to become your own best friend. Mm. Mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. that. And also, I would just like to add also, there's so many opportunities today to be out there and volunteer. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're of service, and it, it mm -hmm. could be the simplest of acts, you know, just picking up a broom and sweeping someone's walkway, it, it's so uplifting to be of service. And it's amazing at the end of the day when you put your head on the pillow and you know that you've given a part of yourself to someone else, and it could be a complete stranger. It makes a world of difference. And the next day after that has a lot more brightness to it than the day before. And John, I like what you're saying about it being a complete stranger because the other day I was leaving Manhattan on the West Side Highway. I got to the toll booth and the toll booth person said, the guy in front of you just paid your toll mm -hmm. in honor of his daughter that died. Mm -hmm. And I was so moved by that and I said, look, I want to pay the guy behind me's toll in honor of my mm -hmm. brother. So yes, you can do it, be of service even to strangers, a really important point. Okay, anybody else? Yes, my name is Carolyn, and I'm wondering, what if I'm having a really hard time finding any good memories about my deceased loved one? How do I mm -hmm. deal with that? You want to take that? So what I recommend is to just tap into your heart, spend some quiet time, and really dig. And it may take some time to go through your memories, go through the past, go through your emotions, and dig a little bit deeper until you find something. I can guarantee you will find at least one good memory and then expand on that memory memory again and again and again. Mm -hmm. You know, Heidi, that, that makes me think about um, the fact that people are, are so afraid they're going to forget that sometimes they hold those memories so tight that they mm -hmm. can't remember. But we do have ambivalent relationships mm -hmm. and I think that mm -hmm. gets into right. your forgiveness you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing and, and doing things. I hope that one thing that people will do is self-care too though. You know, yeah. you That's were talking really about giving to right. others. You need to give to yourself, yourself first. You also need to allow people to help you. There are a lot of us mm -hmm. that right. won't allow people to help us, aren't there? Mm -hmm. It's so important at a time like that to reach out and then also to nurture yourself. Self-nurturing is so important. It's not being selfish and it's not something to feel guilty about because the person who has moved on wants you to live. And it, it's important to understand that and to know that. Mm -hmm. So when you fill yourself up, then you're, you're more of service to people around you. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes giving people the opportunity to serve you is giving right. them a gift. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, yeah. uh, for the mm -hmm. people, I mean, uh, I always say, it's the, uh, if, you're, if you're a giver and you've been giving to everybody, mm -hmm. stop. 
<laughs> and let them give to you. If you've been right. taking all your life, stop and give. Right, right because mean, if you know. when you're receiving, you're allowing someone the joy of yeah. giving. Absolutely. So you're so being it, a service. It's a cycle, right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's so great to have guys yeah. here because, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many guys who don't uh, deal with their loss mm -hmm. or who, you know, or don't want to get down to that crying and, Stuff it down, and yeah. down mm -hmm. into that deep yeah. level. And we can understand that because, uh, you know, we wrote a book called The Real Men Do Cry mm -hmm. with Eric Kipple, who was a quarterback for the Detroit mm -hmm. Lions, because uh, he did cry when his son mm -hmm. uh, died and, and wants to talk about it. And you guys are out here to talk about your parents, too, which is great. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, and to have the to have the courage, you know, we, Chris and I always joke, we say that women are much more courageous than men because you're so much more emotionally in touch mm -hmm. with those deep-seated emotions, and, and especially the emotions of grief and going through that, the trauma of that. And what we do is we assist people, especially men, to deal with that emotion. That, right. that we and all so, have that And ability. so we can find you on the internet if guys mm -hmm. want to find you, right. the Possibility Doctors. Possibility, possibility coaches. coaches. Oh, coaches, sorry. Yeah. PossibilityCoaches.com. <laughs> Right. Okay, and so people can find you on the internet, yeah. and you do some yes. internet work, right? We mm -hmm. do work by Skype. Worldwide. By worldwide. Mm -hmm. right. And over the internet and by phone. Or right. in person, like we are today. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much You're for welcome. being on the show today. It's been it's great, great to have you thank on. Thank you, John and Chris. And thank we you. hope people will go on opentohope.com and hear your radio show. You were on our radio show, too. Yes, we yeah. were. That's right. Keep so spreading the joy, guys. Absolutely. Keep, keep fighting the good fight. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having us. And uh, next, Heidi, we're going to have Ron Bellano on. Ron is great, and he'll he'll be on our show. He's a psychologist and a friend of ours, and he wrote he's the author of The Zing. And then we're going to have Kate Mills, our singer-songwriter, and people can find her on the net, Kate Mills. And uh, she's going to sing Cherry Tree for us at the end okay. of the show, because music's so important. It absolutely is, and it brings us to a whole other place and connects us with our loved ones. And I've got to say something about Ron. Because Ron and I have known each other for a long time. We've, we've done a lot of conferences together. And he has written this book called The Zing. And he is so positive. Yeah. He just, he's like these guys. He's like Ron. And I mean, he's like John and Chris. You know, he, he lives it every day. He talks the talk and he walks the walk. And he had great adversity. And he has found hope and joy. And it's exciting to have him here. So let's see his video. OK. Somebody walks into work and all of a sudden they have a family and they need their income and the boss says, sorry, we have no money to pay you, you have no job. You go home and I get patients come to me and they said, I walked home, I thought my marriage, everything was wonderful. And I walked in and my wife says, the famous phrase, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. And the guy says, what do you think? I said, what I think is, save your money, you don't need me, because the answer's on the wall. It's done, and that pain, and what do you think is really happening? Because you lost your wife, your husband, you lost your job? No, someone took your control. Someone took your plans away from you. How many people plan their day, and by the end of the day, only maybe lucky if half those things happen? Very few can say, I started out in the morning and ended up at the night. Even the anal, obsessive, compulsive people can't even do it. It's impossible. So what makes you think that when you walk out of here, everything's going to go the way you think it was. There's change waiting to happen, and it's within you. Every single one of you have the power. Remember this, and never forget, nothing external can ever make you happy. Nothing external will make you happy. No relationship, no money, nothing. Wealthy people, wealthy people also get sad and are miserable. But don't be fooled. The money isn't making them unhappy. They're unhappy to begin with. And all the money did was depress them more because now they've got the money and they're still unhappy. It is not a heck of a life. The poor people, all poor people, aren't unhappy. See, being poor don't make you happy happy. Being rich don't make you happy or unhappy. Only you do that. And you do that by choice. Welcome to the show, Ron. Thanks for having me. <laughs> It's so great to have you on, and we love the zing, and we love your zing, and you know, this is such a great pick, and you're such an inspiration, and tell them, you lost your son mm -hmm. uh, uh, as a teenager, Michael, and it hasn't been an easy road. No, it was very tough, and anyone who has lost a child understands mm -hmm. that the pain of losing a child is just horrendous, tremendous, and it's not something you could ever even 
you can't fathom it until mm -hmm. you live it. And I always say to people who had loss of a child that we're in a lousy club mm -hmm. because it's, you know, the initiation was very high to pay, but we are in this club. And, you know, what I'm here to tell people is that, yes, I was miserable. I was depressed. When I lost my son, Michael, at 17 years old, I said, you know, I said, he took my life. You didn't even get out of bed. Nothing. Couldn't get out of bed. Couldn't do anything. I can't imagine you totally shut down. Mm -hmm. I was so shut down. Lost about 35 pounds. People thought there was much more going on with me than, than the loss. And really, that's what it was about. And you're right. It shut me down. I couldn't do anything for many years. I know people watching the show, so there's some people out there feeling the same way. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to give some good news. I say, you know, now Michael gave me life. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand that death is real. And I believe when you know death is real is when you start living. And I believe now mm -hmm. it's real, and I live every single moment. When I see people and I'm on the show, I don't live in a networking world. I live in a world that I live in the moment. I'm here for a purpose and a reason. And I'm hoping my purpose on your show, and you know I love you two mm -hmm. guys. You guys do a great job, is that maybe someone listening, a person, I will plant a seed that will get them up and maybe go to someone else who may water it. You know, and open to hope, which is a wonderful organization, and I say that from my heart because... You're in it for the same reason I'm in this, mm -hmm. and that's just to help people. Yeah. And I have steered a lot of my patients to opentohope.com because that's where you can get a variety of resources to help. That's the only thing that can help someone to get from miserable to happiness is knowing that they're not alone, but besides that, there are tools and avenues mm -hmm. that you can go to that can get you to a nicer place. All right, and you wrote the zing. Uh -huh. And tell us about the zing. Why do you call it the zing, and how can I, I get the zing? And I love that name, I do the too. zing. Well, living the zing is living life two levels above passion. Okay. So people oh, say, I like it, Ron. So some people will say, why can't I just live passionately? Because yeah. most people don't live passionately. Most right. people are existing. And that's what keeps psychotherapists in business. Mm -hmm. However, the thing is, if you go for two levels above passion, maybe you will land in a passionate mode or be passionate about something. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're passionate about flowers, that's wonderful. You're passionate about being on a show like this, that's wonderful. But you need to catch the zing. Feel the zing. Feel life. This is what you have right now. Okay, now I want to know how long did it take you to feel the zing after a tremendous loss? For me, approximately eight years. Whoa! Okay, so it's years. not a... It, but you weren't totally miserable for eight years. I was totally... It's a gradual... I, yeah, I'd say I was pretty miserable for about a good four or five years. Wow. I mean, for me, you know, I was in love with my son. <laughs> mm -hmm. And not saying anyone watching that needs to grieve the way I did. Mm -hmm. But I went through a very deep level of, of grief, which I believe now took me to a very high level of joy. Well, this is the good part of what I'm hearing is that although you were in a deep level of grief for many, many years, eight, now you're in this incredible place of joy and hope. Absolutely. Which is helpful for those out there that are three, four, five years away from the death and still in a bad place. Absolutely. Well, I, I say this. I say one of my phrases, honor your loved one's life by living yours. Oh, right. I like it. Okay, Ron. So where are you located? And I know you've got a radio show. Uh, how can people find you? I think go to to make it simple, thezing.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll get, get you right where we're at. And find out about your radio show. And, yeah, and the, everything's on thezing.com, and if we could help someone, that's great. And, and you also do keynote speeches all over the country. Yes. And you're fabulous, because I've seen you. Thank and you're you. in New Jersey, right? Uh, Long Island. Lo oh, Long, Long Island. Island yes. Why did I think New Jersey? Yeah. Anyway, Long Island. All so right. Maybe so I'm people... sounding like a New Jersey. <laughs> 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 so people can see you out there. They, they can see me, they give a call. We have, you know, I have three locations for psychotherapy. 14 therapists work for me, from psychologists to mm -hmm. social workers, mental health counselors. We're there to help. I mean, no matter what, you know, we work with insurance, you know, and everything else. But the point of the whole thing is, if someone's feeling down, they don't have to be. And that was the point of me being here today, is to let someone out there know that you don't have to be in that dark spot. There mm -hmm. is help, and, and you can get there. I never thought I would. I have a story of Job. If we had more time, I mean, there's so much more to my life than sometimes I portray out there, but there's a lot to it. And there's a lot of, lot of things to do in your life to bring joy to you. And one of them is, and I believe in this, seek out a professional counselor. Mm -hmm. However, I believe in very much in licensed counselors. You know, it took a lot of years to go to school to get this information. Mm -hmm. And now to sit across from someone who has experienced a loss like that on top of that, it means a lot because there are a lot of people out there that aren't licensed and people are very vulnerable mm -hmm. after they lose someone. And you're willing to listen to anything, anyone, hoping that they'll take you to a better place. And sometimes I see they come to my office and they say they spent so much money on different things and help and, you know, so many different ways of using it and it didn't And didn't make help. sure it's a good fit because I think goodness of fit be. is everything. If you go to someone and you don't feel comfortable, go to somebody else. Yes. 
I love what you said on one of your shows. I was watching one of your shows, and you said that you went for counseling when you lost Scott, mm -hmm. and you went once. Yes. And that happened to me, too. Okay. I, yeah, I walked out crying and feeling yep. worse I than when too. I got there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are, uh, with the internet, you can go to Open to Help, and we do have forums and that kind of thing. And you can also go to uh, ADAC, Association of Death Educators. They yes. have counselors uh, all and over the United States. And one more thing I want to say about Ron, Mom, is that he is on television nationally giving a tip of the day. What are you doing? You're giving, you're giving things. I give an do. inspirational tip Thank of the you. day. Yep. And I'm on Verizon Fios. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I'm in all the markets, so, you know, I pop up when you watch okay, TV. Okay, give us an inspirational tip of the day. Um, listen to me every day. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> inspirational tip of the day for me is, one of my other phrases is, when you choose to change your thoughts, you begin to change your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay. That is so true. Yeah. That is what, so what we focus on grows. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what are some more things I need to know? What if I'm sitting here, I'm listening to you, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm still in bed. I'm, what was the first thing that got you up? Well, one of the things that actually got me going was I woke up one day, and I was on my, got on my knees, and I looked up to God, and I said, God of the universe, because I'm a very big believer in God, but not at mm -hmm. that point, okay? Mm -hmm. And I got on my knees, and I said, God, I need change, and I need to feel, because I couldn't feel. Mm -hmm. And I needed change because I knew I was stuck now. I couldn't get going. And you spoke about on your show many times about how men don't like to show their feelings. And, you know, and I was a very sensitive guy, but I realized then that I never really did touch into the feelings. Mm -hmm. And Michael got me to that point. Well, all of a sudden now I started feeling that. And in my life, my, I have a brother-in-law. I lost my brother-in-law a year later on the same oh, wow. highway. He wow. was killed wow. in a car wow. accident, two exits from Michael. I have a friend... Um, uh, Ashley, uh, a young girl that my daughter's friend used, we see all the time, her father, they lost their father at a young age too, to a car accident, to some other things. And so, so when you see all this stuff out there, you know, the biggest process I think that we need to learn is grieving. Mm -hmm. The grieving process isn't only for a loss of a child, it's for a parent. It could be for loss of a job, a relationship. So there's so many ways to grieve. And I think what our job here is, and on your talk show, and, uh, and uh, as professionals, is to help people to grieve. And I don't believe there's any order in grieving. Mm -hmm. I believe you could be crying one day, one day you could be, yeah. joy you know, there's no order to it. All right. Well, Ron, thank, thank you, you Ron. so much for being on the well, show today. Well, thank you for having me. It's great Appreciate to see you. It. And thanks, thanks to our audience and to Chris and John. And, and now we're going to hear from Kate Mills to go out of the show. And we hope that you will visit us at opentohope.com and that you'll do our forums and you'll visit us on Facebook because we want you to know that you're not alone out there. There are many, many people that are there to support you. So God bless. For the springtime is fading fast It's blushing colors you know We won't see again until another year has passed The weatherman says it looks like rain Let's bask in the warmth while we can even if we both get left behind, I'd rather waste the day holding your hand. Will you sit with me under the cherry tree? For the springtime is fading fast. It's blushing colors, you know.
Yes, we've seen these leaves bloom 20 times And yes, they'll bloom again next May But 12 months time can bring so much change Where we are right now will never be the same Will you sit with me under the cherry tree For the springtime is fading fast It's blushing color